Hey y'all, so today is a brand new day. You guys saw how we left off and I apologize for leaving y'all hanging like that. Um, but I really just needed to take that time to actually calm down because I had got so upset and I didn't want to say something that I would regret later. So I said, you know, I'm gonna take a step back, calm down first and then let y'all know exactly what was going on because the situation itself is very immature, very childish. Um, to be a father, it was unnecessary. So I'm gonna give you guys the backstory first and then lead up to what actually transpired. So over the weekend, uh, say Saturday, she went to her dad's house and for one, with him, he's the type of person that everything has to go according to his beat. You know, he wants, if he sent on the text that morning, for example, he sent on the text that morning and said, hey, I'm going to pick her up at 11. You know, I don't let stuff like that bother me because the appropriate thing would have been, hey, is it okay if I pick her up about 11 if you're not busy or if you don't have anything to do? Don't text me the day of and say, hey, I want to get her at so-and-so time. For one, that's that's issue one. But I let it slide. I had stuff that I had to do. So I texted him back and I was like, I think I called. I was like, hey, can we meet now to get her? So he was like, um, no, now is not a good time. That's why I said 11. So I was like, okay, well, 11 doesn't work for me. You know, so he was like, I said, you know, I'll be done about three with what I have going on. You can get her then. So he goes to say... Um, okay, that'll, that'll work. Long story short, he ended up getting her, his sister actually ended up coming to where I was and got her and took her there. That was Saturday. So come Sunday, say about three, about three o'clock, he calls and say, I'm getting ready to go to my mom's house. Is it, a, no, he asked me, was I going to church? Um, that day and I was like, no, we're not going to church because church was canceled. So... He was like, okay, well, I'm going to get ready to go to my mom's house. I'll be ready when I'm done. Not one time did he give me a time that he was going to be done. He just said when he's done with his mom, he'll be ready to drop her off. Cool. Me and Elwood was out. My phone died. When I was able to get to the car, charge it up, I saw I had a message, a text message. And the text message read, um, I told you what I was going to do. I'm going to insert the message out because I, I can't think of it word from word. But basically saying, yeah, I told you what I was going to do. Um, this is some BS and you cut your phone off. First of all, there's the second issue. Don't tell me what I did. Because I did not cut my phone off, my phone died. If I cut, first of all, I'm not going to cut my phone off and I have children. Number one, I'm not going to cut my phone off. I have kids. Second of all, I know I'm supposed to be meeting you. Don't know what time I'm supposed to be meeting you, but I know I'm supposed to be meeting you. Therefore, why would I cut my phone off? I, I don't have an issue with getting my kids. I don't. To be honest, I don't even like when my kids leave me. So I know I don't have an issue picking them up. So I called. I did. I called and I said, first of all, don't tell me what I did because stuff happens. I don't sit around waiting on nobody. You never gave me a time. Had you said, okay, hey, yeah, I'm going to be ready about 4 o'clock. I would have known, okay, 4 o'clock, I know I need to be here. I didn't get a time. Therefore, I was not there. I'm not sitting around waiting. No, I have stuff going on in my life as well. So... And she was like, oh, no, that's unnecessary. Oh, that's unnecessary. Uh, you ain't got to do all that. You ain't got to do all that. Yes, it's necessary because you're not going to tell me what I did that I really didn't do. As if I'm supposed to just sit here and cater to you, sit here and wait for you. No, that's not how life works. That's not how my life works. No, it, that's just not how it works. Anyways, moving along. I said, I told him, I said, you know what? Um, Just meet me now. I'll be there in like five minutes. Oh, well, I already took it to your mom's house. Okay, cool. That'll work too. Click. Hung up the phone. There's nothing else for us to talk about. You told me where my child was at. That's that. Nothing else 
to discuss. He calls me back. I did not answer. For what? You told me where she was at. What we got to talk about now? Anything else is irrelevant. I'm going to get my child. When they got her, picked her up. So, at this point, we I go pick her up. We in the car, and she was like, Mama, um, you know he had called you some BS, but he actually said the words to her. Well, first of all, let me back up. She said, yeah, I don't think I want to go back over there for a while. I said, oh, okay, why? Wow, what happened? She was like, um, because it seemed like every time I go over there, I'm always the blame. I'm always the one getting in trouble for something that I didn't even do. So, okay. I said, well, you know what? You're of age. You don't have to go back. I said, to be honest, you wasn't going back for a while anyway. And yes, I did tell her that. And let me just clarify this because I don't want anyone to come at me and say, oh, you shouldn't do that. Or, you know, that's still her dad. Blase, 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 whatever, whatever. I can do that. For the simple fact that he already only gets her when it's convenient for him. It's not like she's on a set schedule when she goes over there or whatever. You get her and you're ready to drop her off. And every time she goes, she's getting in trouble for something. She's getting fussed at. Like, she cannot be herself over there. She has to walk on eggshells every time she go over there. And I don't want my kids to live like that. They shouldn't live like that because they are kids. They will not live like that. She's only 14 years old. Why she have to walk on eggshells at her father's house is, it baffles me. Like, that's that's unnecessary. So anyway, she goes to tell me the story that her aunt, which is his sister, gave her $20. The $20 was supposed to be split between her and her little sister that's over there. So they would have $10 a piece. Okay, apparently this $20 went missing. I don't know. I don't know what happened to the twenty dollars. I wasn't there. Tessa said she went to ask him. Did he see it? He said no. Um, they couldn't find it. Whatever. Tessa went over there with money. When she went over there, she had thirty five dollars. So he thought that she took the twenty dollars that she had, not knowing that she had twenty dollars prior to coming over there. I said, you know what? Don't worry about it. Don't even worry about it. It's, it's not. It's not that deep. So she goes to tell me that, um, well, yeah, my, well, he also, um, you know, he was just going on and on and he was mad because he had to bring me over here to, which my mom's house, um, just so he can go back home and go to sleep. Y'all, when I tell you this mess stresses me out, it stresses me out. And I don't even know why I let it stress me out, but it's because what I want to say, I don't say for the simple fact that I'm trying to live a drama free, stress free life and I know I will stress myself out going back and forth with this person because he's gonna go back and forth with me too and that's just that's just the energy that comes with that so I told her don't worry about the money or whatever you know she don't have to go back for a while if she don't want to it's her choice she's 14 I will let her make that choice even though I had already made the choice for her but that's neither here nor there so he gonna look tell me that you cut your phone off and you some bs and this this and that not knowing what could have been going on with you i said exactly then that was my point first of all i've never said anything negative about him to her i don't believe in talking negative about the other parent to our children why i take care of her on a daily basis why do you feel the need to talk about me negatively to her? Not knowing the situation. I could have been dead on the side of the road. There's no telling what could have been going on. But instead of trying to figure out what was going on, you get upset. You say, oh, this is the second time this happened. So, it's your child. So, you could have very well took her home with you until I reached out to you. Suppose something did happen to me and now you know took us to my mama house and discombobulated their whole schedule or what they had going on. I don't get it. I really don't get it. And y'all please leave a comment down below and let me know how y'all would have handled this situation. All because I did not answer my phone because my phone was dead and I had no charger with me at the moment because I was inside of a store getting groceries for my other children, getting groceries for my house. I'm some bullshit. Mm, make it make sense to me. Nonetheless, nonetheless, 
the next day come. No, later on that night. Later on that night, you guys saw, which is early in this video, she come to me and she hand me this, this letter. So I look at the letter. I look at it. And I started laughing. You guys saw that. It was funny to me. Because why? You are her father. She's a 14-year-old teenage girl. Your daughter. And you mean to tell me you couldn't have a conversation with her about how you felt? You had to write her a letter about how you felt? Who does that? She found it in her purse. I think she told me she it was in her bag, in her purse, wherever it was at. And he took the $20 out of her purse that he assumed she stole, even though she came to his house with $35. Make it make sense. So this is the letter. I'm going to show you guys the letter. Because, like I said, at first I laughed, y'all saw. And I thought she was laughing too, but she was crying. And seeing her break down like that hurt me. And I'm going to read it too. It says, and I'm reading it exactly as I see it because I, I really could not understand what was trying to be said here. But it says, it's I can't allow you to move in, know the way you are. I interpreted it as, I can't allow you, I can't allow you to move in with me now knowing the way you are. Love you and you will always be my daughter, but you got to fix yourself. And Zion is keeping the $20, which is his daughter. Love you and you will always be my daughter, but you got to fix yourself. That's a problem in itself. The back of it says, you make things hard on everybody. I can't trust you because you lie and steal. I can't make this up, y'all. I can't make it up. I can't. Excuse my nails, y'all. My nails ain't done. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna get, I'm gonna get, that's neither here nor there. Excuse my nails. But listen, I can't make it up. What person, what parent, it could have been mama or daddy, what parent writes a note to their child like this, telling them they need to fix themselves? I understood why she was hurt. I did. You make things hard on everybody. She don't make things hard on me. You speak for yourself. She don't make things hard on me. She's a child. Kids do dumb stuff all the time. I know I do not know not one perfect child. Not one. We did dumb stuff. All of us. Every last one of us. We did dumb stuff. We wasn't perfect. I would never tell her she made things hard on everybody. Because she don't. She didn't ask to be here. She didn't ask to be here. Furthermore, who the hell trusts kids when you know kids gonna do dumb stuff? I know kids gonna do something dumb. Why would I trust them? I know if I got three juices in the refrigerator, I can bet my bottom dollars one of them gonna disappear. And everybody in my house gonna say they don't know who did it. But guess what? I already knew that. Because kids do dumb stuff. If I had a piece of candy sitting on top of my counter and it was mine, I could say, y'all don't touch this candy. It's mine. They probably won't touch it. But I don't trust them to not touch it. Therefore, I know by me putting my piece of candy on that counter, I'm taking a chance of one of these kids taking it. It's candy. Kids do dumb stuff. They're going to lie. They're going to steal. It's our job as parents to teach them right from wrong. Regardless of if we have to say the same thing over and over and over again, it'll click eventually. They kids. 
the next day comes and he calls. I don't want to talk. It's nothing to talk about. What do we have to talk about after you told my child this? Which I already knew what he was calling for. He was calling to tell me about the money. Because he said, oh, need to talk to you. It's not about the BS from yesterday. I don't care. I don't, it's nothing to talk about. I know you was calling me about the money situation because she found the letter and we didn't get it. He didn't get a chance to tell me about it. So I knew you was calling about the $20. So I sent him a text message. I said, there's nothing to talk about. I said, if you're t calling about the $20, no, I said, there's nothing to talk about. I'm, again, I'm going to put the message, my exact message that I said so you guys can see I'm not making this stuff up. Y'all, I can't make this stuff up. I can't. I'm going to let you guys read what I said. So, I was basically saying, because she's not perfect, because this letter states that you need to fix yourself because you're not perfect. Like, I guess his other kids. You need to fix yourself because you're flawed. Why would I let my child go back over there? In the comment section, tell me why I should let her go back over there. So not only do she have to walk on eggshells when she's there, now she has to be super perfect, which she's not. None of us are. No, I'm not going to put her in that situation just to to possibly do something he don't like and now she's in trouble again. I will not. I'll be a fool if I do. And y'all can take it to the judge. I don't care. I will not. I sent a text. I sent a text. Y'all read it. It basically said, you can let your daughter keep the $20. I said, keep in mind that she came to you with money. I said, but it's okay. It's, that's, that's fine. She's a child. Kids do dumb stuff. I will never write a letter to her telling her how I feel about her. I would never do that. I would never expect her to be perfect. I would never. I love her the way she is. Flawed and all, I love her the way she is. She didn't ask to be here. We brought her here. I can't pick and choose when I'm gonna take care of her or any of my kids. I can't pick and choose, I can't turn it off. I can't say, oh, you got in trouble yesterday. I'm not gonna be your mom. I'll try again next week. <laughs> yeah, right. No, I don't do that. I can't pick and choose when. There have been several times when, he, when she had done something stupid and he would say, oh yeah, you keep on this path, I'm gonna cut you off. She's 14. How are you going to cut off a 14-year-old? How can you pick and choose when you're on a parent, a child? I can't do that. So even if you cut her off, guess what? I still have to take care of her. I still have to lead and guide her as her mother. And I will do that. I don't know. The text messages, after I said what I said, I was, I was over it. I was done with it. It is what it is. But this is my thing. This was my biggest issue. This was my biggest issue. How can you want to have a conversation with me? Like, any type of conversation with me after you sat there and blatantly told my daughter that I'm some bullshit. That was bullshit. Make it make sense. How do you expect me to have a conversation with you after you sat there and talked about me to her? He act like he had forgotten what he said. I didn't forget. But at the same time, I'm not here to please anybody. I'm not trying to please anybody outside of my household. I don't know, y'all. Y'all let me know what y'all comments down in the comment section, what you thought. This, I felt like everything that could have went wrong on Sunday went wrong, y'all. So I was supposed to be, y'all saw, making this cooking video. Well, I was doing a nightly, I was doing a nightly uh, routine video. I was trying to do a nightly routine video. You guys was gonna hang out with us, 
do all of this fun stuff with us. And that was part, the first part of it, the first half of it. You know, when she came and wrote me the letter, it's like, it, it, threw, it killed my vibe. It killed everything. Everybody was just off. And then I said, okay, you know what? I'm gonna step back. I'm gonna put that particular video on hold, on pause to talk about it later, do what, something different, which is what I'm doing now to actually have a sit down with you guys with her not around. Cause I didn't really want her. We had already said enough that night in the heat of the moment. So I, I didn't want to have a conversation around her because I don't know. Yeah, I, I try not to talk negative to my kids about the other parents or whatever, but I knew had I made that video that night, I would have said some stuff that I would have probably later regret saying. And I probably wouldn't. I, I, I knew I wouldn't regret saying, but I didn't, I didn't want to say it in front of her. I put it like that. I didn't want to say it in front of her. And I'm sure she's going to watch this video, and that's why I waited till I calmed down to actually um, tell you guys what happened so I can be in a better state of mind. So, with that being said, y'all, yeah, so... That's why I put that video on hold and we started to do another video with just us at the dinner table eating, enjoying ourselves, being us. And y'all, we filmed the whole video and the mic was off. So that video is trash and it sucked because it was a good video, you know? It was just us, you know, at the dinner table and it's trash. I can't even use it because there's no type of sound whatsoever. So, yeah. Sunday was horrible. Sunday was horrible. But, you know, we're going to keep pushing. You guys, you know, I know we stated earlier in the video, this is why we don't, this is why we can't be consistent because we have so much drama going on and so much stuff. And once it kills your vibe, it's like I can't bring that energy out to you guys. I don't want to bring that energy out to you guys because it's negative energy. Why would I do that? I can't, I can't. I don't want the negative energy. Why would I pass it on to someone else? So, yeah, that's 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 that tad bit of what was going on in earlier in this video. So, we still gonna be more consistent because you know what? That incident, that the way that had played out, is it was. I guess it was meant to be caught on camera. Because usually stuff like that happens and the camera's not on. And it's like, dog, you know, y'all, we got our family. You guys think that we some bulls, <laughs> some bulls, because we ain't being consistent with the videos or whatever. Like, we keep saying we are. But, y'all, behind these cameras, I, man, it's so much drama going on. There's so much stuff going on behind the camera set. It's, it's hard. It is really hard trying to be consistent. But we told ourselves, you know what? That's enough. That's enough of trying to hide it. Like, we gonna bring it to y'all. I mean, not so much of the negative energy, but what goes on in our life. You know, I still feel, like I said, I, I don't want to bring you guys negative energy. But I will let you guys know what's going on. And I think that would probably be the best way to do it. Even if everything has calmed down and we can actually talk to you guys about it. I think that would be a great idea. Um, also, you know, I told you guys in the previous video um, that we have some big changes coming. And we do. You know, super excited about the changes to come. Um, I think I want to wait until me and Edward are together to talk to you guys. Because it, it's been some things. It's a reason why we haven't been consistent lately. And we want to talk to you guys about it and lay everything out. And we can actually talk about it now. Because we actually tried to do a video before and let you guys know what was going on. But it was like so much stuff we couldn't say. So I was like, you know what, babe? This video is pointless. Because every time we try to talk about something, we'd be like, nah, we can't say that right now. Nah, we let's leave that part out. Nah, let's it's done. Every that that portion of our life is done. 
and that's been going on for two years. Two, two years we've been dealing with that situation. But now that it's done, we can actually talk to you guys about it and let you guys know what the hole up was and what's getting ready to change. And yeah, we're super excited about that. Um, any more life updates? Uh, I think that's pretty much it, y'all. Um, we also been thinking about freaking doing something different on our channel, but I think what I'm going to do is create another channel for what we want to do with the kids. Because I think this channel here is more, it's more of a vlog style channel because that's what we started doing. We started doing pranks and challenges and all of that, but we ended up doing a lot of vlogs as well. And you guys seem to like our vlogs and stuff. So I think as you guys can see, we had added a couple of skits, but you guys didn't really care for the skits. So we're not gonna put the skits on this channel. I'm actually gonna take them down and I'm gonna create another channel more so geared towards the, for the kids, for our kids to create their content to put out to kids, a younger audience. And this will be more of like our family channel with all of us so you guys can see this type of stuff that, you know, go on in our life as well. So this will be more, we try to keep it PG. Um, because we know we have kid audience and our kids watch the video as well. But at the same time, it's, this is real life, you know? So we don't want to sugarcoat anything either, you know? Yeah, we try to watch our words that we use. We try to choose our words carefully when we are vlogging. But sometimes, I mean, we're, we're human, you know, it's life. We go on the cuss because <laughs> we cuss. So... That's why I say, you know, I think I'm going to just make a different channel more so for the kids to the kids so that we can actually be ourselves on this channel. And if you guys don't want your children watching the content here, you know, that's fine. Like I said, we try to keep it PG. You know, we try to watch what we say, but at the same time, we, we are human. You know, I try to edit it out as much as I can, but again, we are human. So, with that being said, you guys, I'm going to end this video right here because I already know it's, it's a long video. I talked to y'all a good bit, um, but I really wanted to get that out because y'all saw what happened, what transpired, how it transpired. So, I didn't want to just leave you guys wanting to know, oh, what happened? You know, why is she crying? This, 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 and that. Um, so, yeah, that was the purpose of this video, just to let you guys know what happened. So, with that being said, you guys, we will see you guys in the next video. Make sure you guys stay safe, be blessed, and we love you guys. Peace.